I notice that when I do, I'm doing something, or I'm making something, creating something, be it a video or a text, or a, a text, yeah, like a, a writing, or a text, even like a messaging text for someone else. I notice my mind frequently asks itself <clears throat> how will this be perceived <clears throat> by whomever looks at it <clears throat> how will they perceive it and simplistically it's this the question is will they like it Will they like it or will they not like it? Will they hate it? Will they reject it? Will they approve of it or will, or will they reject it? <clears throat> because creation of things ah, mm, is generated from ourselves. It's, it comes from an inner part of ourselves. It is not a repetition. And it's not a copying, and it's not a imitating, it's a, it's a creation, it's a... It's like... It comes out of ourselves. And... And the evaluation or the judgment that other people place on this creation is akin perhaps even to some equivalent as the evaluation or judgment these people have on ourselves because a creation is truly begotten by by the creator When there is repetition, when there is imitation, there is always somewhere to point to, like a reference, saying, "Oh no, uh, I didn't do it; they did it," which is quite a, which can be quite a detractor uh, for attention in several manners. Oh, you did that? Really? You think like that? You, 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 this is what you really think? And then one can say, "Oh no, 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 sir, no, no, I, I didn't do it. No, they did it. They did it. And I just, I just, I, I thought that they meant this, or I thought that they meant that." You know, they can, you can de detract the, the, the attention, the energy a little bit, whatever that energy is. It could also be, "Oh my God, you did that! Oh my God, that's so amazing!" And then. And then we could be like, oh, oh, no, no I, I didn't do it. No, it was, it was them. See, they, I, that's, that's where I, I got it from. Which is also a de detractor of energy. They both distract the energy. They distract it. They remove the traction that it had. It was coming towards me. And then I chose to wait. To slip it away, to have it move somewhere else. <clears throat> it loses traction. It was going my way and quick. I slipped it. Slipped it somewhere else. <sighs> and well, we can choose to do that at any point really. It doesn't doesn't mean that the thing that we did really was imitated or rep repeated or anything. Horse sounds. Grüezi. Schönes Pferd. <laughs> A horse with shoes. So yeah. Creation is, it's like a child of us. It is something coming from us. And this can be described or defined at different levels, I imagine. 
I can go ahead and though I don't know how to do some kind of craft like a paper butterfly and I can look it up on YouTube and and I make it exactly as they do and whoop I made a butterfly and we can feel like that's our creation or we can feel like it is the creation of someone else and we're just repeating it in truth every repetition or every imitation really is also a creation it can it, it just it's just a bit shallower it's not it, it may not be fully from the depths of ourselves it can be just from like oh yeah we think that's good so like we know the value is there and look we adopt the, ex the the value from the external and we repeat it rings and repeat um, however i can see that going i can see that the the the, the, the the essence of what makes it creation or not is not really how we do it it's not really what what references we're using what where do we, where are we getting it from it's really how we feel about it how i feel about something when i'm making something that's what makes it more deeply my creation or not because i can imagine a um, an amateur person like myself making paper butterflies from YouTube videos. <clears throat> I do it and I don't know nothing, I know nothing about it and I'm copying this craft, craft, but I'm putting all of my attention in it. I'm putting all of my energy into it because I've never done it before. So I do it and I do it and, and then in the end, <gasps> I have a butterfly and it's, <gasps> and it feels like I truly did it like from myself. And yes, and then I use the reference, an external reference. However, the, the feeling of creation, even if it's even if it's something menial, it doesn't it doesn't matter what what other references are known by. Oh, is it easy? Is it hard? Is it uh, oh, you just made scrambled eggs? Whatever. Um, it, it does not matter what it is, how we did it. It matters how much of our own energy how much of our own uh, attention did we give it during its creation mm. Mm. interestingly that's what defines how truthful what we do and what we say is simply ourselves How close is it? How aligned is it with what we are doing? I feel if I put my attention, if I devote my attention, my energy into something completely, it does not matter how easy or how hard or how amazing or spectacular or new or innovative or cliche or astounding it is or how or is felt by other people. It is more deeply my creation. Because in the example of the paper butterfly, I can also imagine someone who is perhaps is not that interested in making the paper butterfly. And they just, perhaps they need to do it for school. And they're like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm going to make a paper butterfly. And then they make it, and perhaps their mind is somewhere else. Perhaps they're not really giving it their full attention. Perhaps they come up with a beautiful paper butterfly. It seems to me, though, that if they, it, that if they did not, if they were not there with the process, if they did not fully place their intent on what they were making, then it's, uh, it's a shallower creation. It's interesting. What I was thinking of before was that sometimes I see YouTube videos or creations or uh, just... Uh, stuff that people make you know movies short stories writings poems pictures that are that impress me to for which i feel oh wow wow like wow something new came into me and it, it, it makes an impression on me a common thought that comes to me is couldn't i have done that isn't it and 
I'm gonna get a little closer. <clears throat> Couldn't I have done that? Isn't it just as easy as learning how to use this tool and making it happen, being creative? Like I've been seeing a lot of Bill Wirtz videos lately, and oh my god, the guy's a creativity <laughs> river. He just keeps going and keeps going. And even, I'm, I'm taking some ideas actually from what he's been saying uh, in his videos, which are awesome, by the way. Uh, what was it? It said something like, it doesn't matter much, but what it said was uh, the a key to being creative is knowing that you can do, you are free to do absolutely whatever you want. Which I thought, like, oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> it makes sense. I wonder if I'm being heard even. Hmm. So yeah, our creations can be shallow or deep. And the only... the factor that chooses whether it is shallow or deep is our own attention, our own energy into it. Huh. And so this... <clears throat> perception, this thought that comes up in my mind at times of, oh, how will it be liked? Is it going to be liked? Is it going to be accepted? Or is it going to be rejected? Or is it going to have the effect that I want? Sometimes people are looking for, for rejection. Sometimes people are looking for <clears throat> anger to come up. They, sometimes they seek to evoke certain emotions. However, when we do that, we are placing the value, we are placing some of the energy outside. We are placing some of the energy like there, wherever, in the viewer, in the viewer, like, oh my God, the viewer, what does the viewer want? What, is the, what can I do so that the viewer is content, that the viewer is ah, satisfied, so that they will pay attention to me? And if they continue to pay attention to me and like me and give me energy, then maybe that energy comes in the form of money or in the form of likes, comments on Facebook. But, and that still places the energy somewhere else in the viewer. It's my hypothesis now that that works creations that i feel are have strong impressions in me are often those that were deeper deeper creations but by, by which i mean that came from a deep place from full attention and energy that was not very concerned with how it was going to be <clears throat> to be received with was not that concerned with whether it was repetitive or the same more different than others where it, that it was not paying attention into anything other than what was happening within or about the creator it was a full creator's experience. <laughs> because that's what... I feel that's what we resonate most. Uh, I feel a certain... innate knowledge and I feel that other people also feel that innate knowledge that whenever someone wants 
when when we are being asked or requested or or forced or to or, or suggest or suggested to like something that's when we there's a little natural natural I feel natural aversion to like okay I, I I don't I'm not going to automatically like it give me a chance to like it first uh, give me a chance to see it first and I feel and my hypothesis is that this energy is felt even through the creation that happened if I'm a book writer an author that I'm writing books and I'm trying to please the crowd I feel that's felt I feel that's felt music videos music it's felt when it's trying to be sold like the 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 role of a salesman of a sales person is is felt that of offering that of wanting to wanting to be accepted wanting to give wanting to do like okay, okay, look at this look at this it's important it has give it give me it's an, give me your energy and by that, I don't, I don't mean that all salesperson, salespeople are like that, mm, or have that energy. Salespeople can also say, hey, I have this thing. Maybe you're interested in it. Would you like to see it? I can show you all the benefits. It's different. The energy is quite different, whether you're, um, whether we are um, trying to change <clears throat> another's perception, trying to change another's evaluation or judgment of things. When we try to change it, like that's our intent, we want to change another person's judgment or perception or, or convictions or beliefs, thoughts, anything, or emotions, we are intruding upon their space. We, each, people, each person, we have a space, we have a things that belong to us as a person. And that includes thoughts, beliefs, emotions, our knowledge, our physical possessions, our, our body integrity. These are part of us. It's part of us. And if someone comes in, someone comes and they want to change it, they want to alter it, they want to change it in any way, even as in a weak, accepted, subtle way as that of salesmanship, it, it feels violating. It feels violating. Even when we don't think that it feels violating, you know, it feels like, uh, just, uh, leave me alone, that's my stuff. This is my emotion. This is my thought. This is my belief. The intent of changing other people. Isn't there a phrase that says that? Oh, you can't, you can't change people. Or some more. Uh, I'll, I'll. <laughs> what is it like when women say, oh, maybe he'll change in the future. And then they actually try to change him. Or the other way around. It's just that I know the stereotypical one from women to men is the one I'm most familiar with. Um, yes. So, uh, I feel that that energy of... What do I call it? Salesmanship? I don't know. No, I, I feel that salesmanship can also be done from a very genuine place. It's the attempt of... <clears throat> the intent of changing someone is what feels violating. If you, do you want to change my thoughts? Like, if, when people are trying to convince each other of things, for example, it can get quite heated. And I feel it can get quite heated because our, the boundaries are trying, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to change each other. No, your thoughts are wrong. My thoughts are right. Here are my thoughts. You listen to them. I'm like, no, no, no. What? What? What do you mean my thoughts are wrong? My thoughts are right. Because it's the natural reaction that comes to any violation. Like, oh, leave me alone. This is my. Th this is me. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to change me? No, no, don't change me. I change you. And, um, 
<laughs> action reaction style. Reaction. Which is not necessary. Reaction is not necessary. That reaction in any case, or really any reaction. We choose at each step whether to act, whether to react. Reactions are... They feel like we're not really choosing them, but we, we do. We do. And it may take time to realize all the reactions that we have and assuage them and mm, soften them so that they actually become a choice of ours. But so, back to the topic. Uh, yeah, when we feel invaded, that's when we... Well, I, when I feel repelled by it. Here's a vacuum cleaner. It's awesome. It just costs, it just costs 150 francs and it cleans everything. They're like, it's the feeling of, of giving, of like, offering, like, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Like, what if I don't want to take it? Even gifts, even gifts, like, I have a horse, it's amazing, you can have it, and yeah, I think it would be amazing with you. There's a difference between, between just telling me, hey, there's a horse, uh, maybe you'd like to have it, would you take care of it? And, hey, I'm moving out, I, I, I don't know where, where to put that horse to, do you want it? Yes, maybe you want it, here it is. Here. Uh, I know that you have a good um, have a good relationship with horses, which is not my case, but <clears throat> it's just an imagined dialogue. Hmm. The point is violations, boundaries. Uh, Sometimes they say the line between this and that is very subtle. It can be, I guess, but sometimes people look to the external to find where the line is. And I'm referring right now to the line between something being uh, an offering, a re an offering, a request, or a demand. Or an um, imposition. I think these are four words for for the mm, an interaction we can have with others in two directions, and and both sides of the line I was describing in which one side of the line can may feel violating, can invade our boundaries, and the other side does not. So an offering is something that comes from us to the other. And it does not, it does not invade. It just says, hey, I have this thing, I would like to offer it to you. Would you like it? it it's a, it's an offering. It does not place it upon a person, it just offers. Whereas an imposition, it is saying, hey, here's a gift, here's for you, you have it. Keep it, bye. It doesn't need to be as overt as that, but even just, uh, what's the line, would it be? an imposition of things like oh yeah what it would it be like something about diet for instance something like oh you're eating meat no you should not eat meat you should, you should not eat meat because it's uh, it's bad for your body it takes a lot of time to digest you should not eat meat it's 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 an imposition of belief of, of habit 
saying, hey, you have a habit of eating meat. That sentence makes it incorrect. It's trying to make it incorrect and saying, here is the alternative. Here's the correct alternative habit. And then that feels violating because, hey, I had my habit. What I did, I, 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 I it's mine. <laughs> I would like to choose to change it for myself and not have others change it for me. Yes, an imposition. Or even, you know, government rules. Sometimes they feel like impositions. Well, rules and laws are kind of impositions. Nay. But like all of these things, they are imaginary. <laughs> and then there is the request and the demand. The request is saying, hey, I, I would like this. The basic structure is, I would like this to happen. Will you, would you like to help me have this happen? Like, it's an asking. So, hey, can, um, can I ask for your help in doing this thing? Like, I would like to change this in the world. Can you help me? Whether this thing in the world be that person's behavior or my person's behavior, or I don't know, the gardening of the land. Maybe can you help me with the gardening? Can you help me with the homework? Can you help me learn how to play music? Uh, anything. It's, a, it's, it's an ask. And then there's demand. And the demand is... The difference is whether the, the, the interaction comes with the assumption that is going to happen. Requests and offerings do not come with the assumption that, that it is going to happen. They are... And to do that, they, they require clarity. They require clarity that, hey, this is something I want. And we are driven towards what we want. It's natural. Driven driven towards what we want. And so unconsciously, if we just let it leave it to the unconscious, it's easy to lose focus and assume that it's going to happen because that's what we want, because we're being driven towards it. Our unconscious is driven towards what it desires. <laughs> it's quite simple. Our conscious can choose. Mm -hmm. And can choose to not make that assumption. To listen. Ah, that's the difference. See, yes. A request and an offer and they, they don't... They do not assume that it is going to happen. It is going to be, it is going to occur. And because they do not assume, zoom, bicycle. Zoom, bicycle. And because they do not assume, ah, then they listen. Because less assumptions require more listening. Assumption is meaning, oh, I know that this is going to happen. And then, and then the listening is not necessary because we kind of just know. Hey, can you feed my dog while I go? I'm just going to go to my work. I just need, to, need him, need you to, I just need you to feed him at five, uh, at, at five. Okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, there was no listening. There was just, there was something requested, assumed that it was going to happen, and boop, and there was no listening afterwards. Listening. Listening is what makes the difference. Assumptions and listening, because they are linked. 
if we have an assumption that something's going to happen, there's no need to listen. Because we, we know that it's going to happen. We know that it's going to happen. And if we don't have the assumption, then we are in the unknown. We do not know. We do not know if it's going to happen. And because we don't know, we probably are going to listen to what the person says because we, we want to know. Our unconscious is driving us towards that place, right? I'm assuming that that's something we desire. We're, like, we're driven towards that. And our conscious is does not assume that it is going to happen. Let's see. Let's see. When there's no assumption, we listen. That holds for interpersonal dynamics. Hmm. That holds for life. Assumptions Assumptions create an imaginary path into the future or sometimes into the path, but they create a path. They get, boom, it's done. We know what's going to happen. And this world is fluid. It's a river. And while we... Ah, while we bodily humans may want to be able to predict and to structure and to organize and categorize and classify and maximize and minimize and <clears throat> know what is going to happen. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know at all. The more we assume, the less we listen. Did I say that right? The less we assume, the more we listen. The more we assume, the less we listen. Hmm. Listening. Ah, I can't imagine the argument being said, oh, then no assumptions at all. We will live in forever. Freedom and dignity and nothing matters at all. Nothing. And I feel that is, um, what's the word? I guess a simple one to use is extremist, but that has other connotations. More like, it goes to the extreme. It's like a, it's, it's an un imbalanced, it's an un imbalanced uh, conclusion. Of saying, oh, we then more listening is good because then that doesn't cause violence. Okay, then we're just never going to assume. And we're like, going one direction until we hit the floor. And we'll hit whatever boundary is there. And usually it's a hard boundary because it's not ready for us. Because we are at that moment also giving our power away to the fact that, oh, we should never assume. Never assume. Never assume. And then poof, we're all the way down on the ground. <laughs> Because we gave it energy away. We gave it to the no assumptions principle. <sighs> assumptions and predictions are very useful at times, though. It is why 
we can <laughs> we communicate with ease with each other because we assume that we can understand each other. Assuming there's a language in common, we just know that the words that I say will have the same meaning to them as it has to me. So we can transmit meaning. It's why the world has a lot of food for people to eat. <clears throat> because people, some people have mastered, they have learned the ways of agriculture and of the earth and of the seasons. <laughs> and that is why they have allowed this instant digital communication because because people were able to find the patterns in which matter moves and in which information can be encoded they found it out and they created they created a framework a structure of encoding things a message from text text what is text oh this is a sign number to each letter and they look okay i guess we already had letters that someone made so it works out and then da, 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 well suddenly we can text each other text each other text each other wow isn't it awesome it's like sending tiny little letters to each other but i don't need paper and i don't need a pen <laughs> i don't need to wait days and weeks till it gets there we can just man instant communication Assumptions. So, <laughs> assumptions can be very useful. Gritty. Assumptions can be useful. Predictions, maximizations, categorizations, classifications, organizations. Yes, super useful. entirely on predictability also gives our power away. It gives our power away to that power of prediction, to that power of, what is it? Patterns. To the pattern power of patterns. It's like saying, oh, I, I I do not choose what happens. The patterns choose. The patterns happen. And so I will just assume that these patterns are right. This is the model correct, correct, or I'm going to use it. And then just use it forever. And as a shape, as a life form, as a species, we have been building and building and building and building assumption upon assumption upon assumption making a framework a huge deep complex framework of assumptions between each other building out from nothing where were these assumptions before they were they were nowhere at some point someone realized oh hey i can transmit meaning with sounds wow okay let's do that and then suddenly they started doing it. And, and then suddenly, oh, people understood each other. Oh, oh my God. I can tell you subtle concepts with a sound. Wow. And then, some, and then at some point, people realized, I can imprint this meaning, this sound, this meaning into form, into blah, stone or wood or leaves. and persist meaning. Hmm. <sighs> We've been building these assumptions. 
And so we as humans in society like to think that assumptions and predictions can save our lives. Like, oh, we just need to depend on them and that's it. Yes, we can live like that. It requires less awareness. It can cause unintended conflicts because assumptions upon other life forms violate their boundaries. Because I hypothesize life, the core of life is choice. It is inherent to life. When choice is removed from a life form, the reaction is to rebel, to repel it, to, to reject it. And you're like, hey, no, I don't take away my choice. I like my choice. That's what I do. Let me choose. Let me live. Live and choose. It's <laughs> intertwined. Life and choice intertwined. Summary. Um, the depth or the shallowness of our creations depend only upon ourselves not on any reference of what what has been created or what or how it will be judged or evaluated by others it does not come from the context in which it was created it does not come from who we are or when we do it or how we do it it comes from and the how a little bit it comes from our own energy and this energy is transmitted into our creations and our messages and this energy can be felt by those who receive and perceive these messages and let's see and attempting to alter or to yeah to alter people's opinions or beliefs or emotions in any way feels violating because at the core we well we don't want to be violated we think that's us that's ours it is and we want we want to choose how to change it And so if we, not, if we do not, <clears throat> assume that something will be evaluated or judged in a certain way, or accepted or rejected, then we listen. We will listen to whether it happens or not, without the assumption. Mm. Actually, the assumption can happen both for acceptance and reject rejection, actually. I remember a fair few times when I have asked to spend, asked the woman to spend more time with me, and they, and and I, and I, it comes with the feeling of with the assumption of rejection. <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. and that is felt. The assumptions are felt because there is not a listening, a listening. The less we assume, the more we listen. The more we assume, the less we listen. That holds for interpersonal dynamics. That holds for the world.
and relying on the principle of m no assumptions or most assumptions, either or, gives our power away and we can become imbalanced unconsciously through it. Assumptions are useful. Predictions are useful. However, a complete reliance on them would render us automatons. Mm -hmm. And four words, four words that were nice. Uh, interpersonal dynamics. Um, there is the giving and receiving. In the giving, there are two words on either line of violation or not. Um, there's an offering. There's an imposition. And there's a request. Hey, request. And there is a demand. Like, it's different. It can be the exact same words. It can be the exact same <laughs> volume, it can be the exact same tone, it can be the exact same <clears throat> anything. It doesn't matter how, what the form is that it takes. What matters is the energy that we infuse it with. is the energy that we infuse it with.